So why aren't pap smears recommended every year any longer? And how often should you get yours? I'll answer these questions in today's video. Well, what's up healthy people? I'm Dr. Madge, DeBoer Certified Family Medicine Physician practicing in sunny San Diego. Make sure to subscribe for weekly useful and actionable health tips to help care for you and your family in two minutes or less. You know, pap smears were traditionally performed annually, but it's been at least a decade since the guidelines have changed, but I'll tell you, I still get new patients in my office once in a while who come in thinking that they're due for one every single year. Now, why are they done less frequently now? Maybe if we can answer this question, you'll feel more at ease. First of all, our testing technology has improved. We're better at detecting it now than ever before, which makes sense. Times are changing. We're getting more tech savvy here. Second, there's an extra test that goes along with it to check for the presence of human papillomavirus or HPV. This is the cause of cervical cancer, which is a virus that is transmitted sexually. Yes, cancer of the cervix is caused by an STD. So we use the information from both the pap smear test and the HPV test for improved detection and management. And lastly, cervical cancer is often slow growing. It often takes years to develop. Knowing all of this, how often are pap smears now recommended? Well, for the average healthy female, we start testing at age 21 and then every three years until age 30. Then, after age 30, we test most women every five years. Yep, you heard right, five years. And we stop at age 65. Now, why do we test so infrequently after age 30? Because cancer of the cervix is more common in young, sexually active women who may change partners or who have partners who have changed partners. So women in stable monogamous, meaning only one partner long-term, are less at risk. Now keep in mind that these are guidelines for the typical healthy female without recent abnormal pap smears. Other risk factors can actually change how often your doctor decides to test you, such as how often you change partners. If you come down with, let's say, another STD, etc. As a side note, just because you may not need a pap smear every year though doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a physical annually. It just won't include a pap smear is all. Make sure to check out my last video on what the pap smear procedure really is and how it's actually performed. Especially if you've never had one and you're about to get your first one. Now, are you relieved that paps are no longer done annually or are you uncomfortable with the change in recommendation after learning the reasons for the guideline changes? Write the word relieved or uncomfortable in the comments down below. Me, personally, totally relieved. Pap smears are no fun. Now, if you found the information useful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and share it with someone else who may find it useful. And don't forget to hit that red subscribe button down there and that notification bell next to it so that you don't miss any future weekly videos. Well, thanks for tuning in, stay healthy, and I'll catch you next time.